Hey, hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And today we have another one of those special reaction videos where I find a few interesting short videos to show Woody and to react on it live. If you haven't seen any of these, these are very short uh, videos. They're like one, two minutes tops. Oh. And there's a few of them. And uh, I put them together for you because they are they're pretty interesting. And I want to get your reaction on them. Cool. And, and see what way. happens. So let's give it a shot. So the first one is titled... Well, why so many fish all of a sudden? And let me just set this one up really quick. So you know how when you go on a two-tank dive, uh, sometimes divers will, like, while they're doing the surface interval and waiting or whatever, they'll jump off the boat and they'll do, like, snorkeling or they'll, yep. they'll just sit there or whatever. That's what these guys were doing. So they were like, we're just going to be on the back of the boat. They're, like, I think they're holding from the line or whatever, you know, the tow line that the boat will throw or whatever. Or their pee-pee. Oh, they're peeing, yeah, or whatever. So they're just back there or whatever, and they took their camera, and they're just recording. It's like, man, there's a lot of tiny fish. Okay. So they're recording this thing, and here's what happens. Ah. They're in a school. <laughs> that, what? <laughs> wow. That would be amazing to happen. <laughs> I had no idea that was coming. You're going to have to do more to clean that wetsuit. <laughs> wow. I wish that would happen to me. Dude. That's amazing. Imagine oh, you're back humpback, there. Humpback whale. They just are chasing those school of, I guess they're sardines, man. But can you imagine? And wow. By the way. Do you think the whale was like smart enough to go where that guy wasn't, or was that just random luck? I mean, it comes up. What if that was just a close call. I don't think the whale even saw that guy. No way. Wow. I wish that would happen to me. <laughs> that would be awesome. But but a close amazing. call. Not you don't want to. No, end I don't up want to end up being a smelt or hurt it in any way. I it just yeah. I but it would be super cool and to have that on video. Well, what are the chances that somebody's just videoing somebody jumping in off the back of the boat <laughs> and have that happen? That's epic. Yeah. That's yeah. my reaction. I want that to happen to me. <laughs> I love the guy at the end. It's like, you're going to have to clean that wetsuit. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was pretty cool. All right. The second one is, I think this was in Socorro. Right, so then in Socorro Island, they are uh, in Mexico. They are diving with uh, great white sharks, so they're on the uh, inside the cage, diving with a great white shark. And they were, they happened to ha to be looking at this massive great white shark who was very friendly, and he wanted a hug. So that's why this one is titled "Can I Get a Hug." Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Can I just... So he came in the cage. Wanted a hug. By accident. He's in the cage? That's in the cage. Oh my god. Somebody got it. Oh man, look he's getting hurt. That's sad. Wow. Was there anybody in there? Yeah, there was somebody in there. Nobody in the cage? Yeah, somebody's in the cage. Bubbles still, so they're breathing. I'm sure they're... It has to be, um... Uh, Ming. It's Ming. It's Ming. Hey, Ming. Well, come back! You get a hug? Okay. I mean, yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, I'm, anybody would be like pretty nervous. If that sucker ended up inside the cage, 
what I'm wondering, I can't help it. This is how my mind thinks. I mean, obviously that guy, he's just going to pin himself up in a corner and try his best Hope to for the stay best. away. Because a shark has was not in there trying to hurt that guy. He no. accidentally squeezed through the outside. How that's big is that part, cage, though? That's what I've never gone in. I know you've done it once, I think, right? Well, Have you done it? Yes. Okay. I've done it in South Africa off of Seal Island. How big is it? The, the, that mass because I mean if you see it at the beginning that shark was massive they're about like that size but I never knew that they could squeeze through those bars they're, the bars are wow. made so that the average great white cannot get in there so that thing must have just been like really wanted a hug no fast he accidentally mm. rammed into it fast and the body just squeezed in by accident and he cut himself the shark was bleeding so he went in there so hard he got hurt Mm-hmm. Now, that's the other side of it that some people are going to react to is like, this is why we shouldn't be doing that because you're going to hurt the animal. I agree. And that's not a bad observation. I feel bad for the shark there. I'm very glad that he didn't get hurt. Of, the of person, course. Of course, but of course. I feel bad for the shark. I was just trying to get out. The shark was scared out of its mind. Like, get me out. And he's bleeding because they, you know, accidentally he wedged himself into those bars it's sad really yeah absolutely this last one is the longest one uh of the of the um clips that we put together and you know rarely i find videos on youtube where honestly there's nothing to like comment on or 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 be even point out to say that you could have done this better like for me like every time i watch a video even if it looks good like oh man i was on that day, I was really good. I look really good. There's always something to improve. But, man, on this video, the the diver in this video, flawless technique. Cool. Nothing to improve. I don't wow. know if you I don't know if you agree, but I, for I me. Know. I haven't seen it. So. Right, for me, flawless. Okay. Charity, I'm gonna send a video to your daddy. I'm gonna send a video to your daddy. What hey, what would you say if he was here today? If, he, if you, I mean, to send him in Afghanistan, sorry, what would you tell him? Tell him I love him, Mommy, and that I will love him for always. Love him for always? Mm -hmm. And what, would you give him a big hug or a kiss? All right, Lucy, what would you say? Would you say love you, Daddy? <laughs> Mommy, what would you say? Love you, miss you. That's it? Uh, uh, I want your body. I think <laughs> you, uh, too, <laughs> too hotty for a toddy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to send this to him on Facebook. <laughs> Are you freaking no. kidding me? No awesome. way. <laughs> your husband's here reporting for duty. <laughs> what the? That's unbelievable. Wow. Charity. So happy. <laughs> she can't believe. I mean, so wow. If he was here today, what would you ask? What did you tell him? She she said that you're too hot. Your body, your hot body. So she. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome home, Captain Bronson. <sighs> That's awesome, man. I, that Wallace. is such a great setup. Unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. That is so cool. He's in his uniform. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> At the beginning, she's like, I guess she would be so confused. Like, what? Am I seeing things? Yeah. I thought it was cool. The message that she gave is like, I want your body. Now I feel like 
Every time they ask my wife for a message for for her husband, it's like, bring dinner for the kids type of thing. There's never... I feel like that's the new bar, you know? She set the bar high. Um, but interestingly enough, um, you know, I love the fact that at the end of the video, they mention his name, Captain Robson, because I went on Facebook and I found this guy. He, his station here in Georgia, uh, Warner Robbins. Yeah. In Georgia. So um, I actually invite him to the show. Wow. Yeah. So he's going to join so us it's next. It's like the same surprise to us. Yeah. So he's he's going to uh, join us next. I better not tell him. On the show. I want your body. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, everybody. Don't. Easy. Don't, we, that's take, a joke. That's. We don't. I've been. Dude. That's a, that's a nice be joke. Be respectful. He's still. No, that's a great joke. I, that's. He's. That's not. Captain. I'm glad he's not. Well, I'm going to talk to him in a little while, I guess. I had no idea that was happening. <laughs> we'll be right back. I'm not going to ask him, by the way, Captain Robson, how the and his whole wife. reunion we, went. That's she said. Dude, not, no, I'm just saying she said I want. We, yes, but so that, we don't want to go into that's, that. Let's. That's what I'm saying. We don't want to go into that. I'm, I'm, I'm commenting on what we shouldn't talk about. We'll, we'll be right back. All right, and here we are a couple of days later, but we made it happen. Welcome, guys, to the show. Yeah, welcome. How about it's that? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome to have you. So for all of the people watching online on YouTube, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Okay. So I'm Hiram Bronson. Uh, it's my wife, Bethany. Um, it's been, a, I guess, a few years since we did the video, but at that time we'd been in the Air Force for a little while and I was just coming back from um, uh, a pretty long deployment with the Army and, um, yeah. In Afghanistan? Yep, in Afghanistan. And yeah. So, yeah, we, at that point, we, we'd been married for about 10 years and thankfully it's, <laughs> we're still married after the, <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's so, awesome. So I, I guess I'll start off by saying, why don't you give us some logistics information? Exactly. I think a lot of people got to be wondering, how did you arrange it so perfectly that she would be in the water and you would be able to come up and keep her in the water? Like who was coordinating all of that? How long was he in the water? I don't know. They had, I mean, she was in the water and then you like, what were you like scuba diving like 10 feet away, looking underwater. But even that, how did, who, who handled all that for you? Just walk us through this. There were definitely some was great planning involved. Well, yeah, well, definitely. Well, I think there was a number of people that had that question because if, if you go back and look at some of these comments um, that people have had over the years on this video, it's pretty hilarious. One person actually um, asked was like, Holy cow, did, did he swim all the way back from Afghanistan? Oh, man. <laughs> On one tank of air? Yes. <laughs> and you managed the, to uh, get there at the right time. Of Afghanistan. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> wow. So, um, but no, it's, uh, so it took, a, I guess, a little bit of planning. We, but thankfully, we kind of had a tradition uh, while we were over there in Okinawa that a number of families that we went to church with just every Monday night we went out to the the marina there and we had family night together and so I it was you know summertime so I already kind of knew that they were going to be out there on a Monday night and then it just was a matter of finding out when I was going to be returning and trying to line the times up um, I, I got back on Sunday um, flew back in, and so I had to figure out some place to stay <laughs> and yes. a way to to make it so um, Bethany and the and the kiddos wouldn't or anybody that would talk to them right. wouldn't find out that I was there. Right. So one of our one of our family friends, the guy um, who's actually filming the video, um, they we had been talking with them for a little while, or I had about trying to coordinate something. And so Troy had, had picked me up from the, uh, from the airport, brought me to the house, and they stashed me in one of their spare bedrooms and then told their kids not to go in there. They actually locked the door so their kids couldn't get in there because they knew their kids wouldn't be quiet. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, 
So the, I got there on Sunday, and so it was a matter of just really <laughs> just trying to finagle getting Bethany and all the kids out of the house. Um, so all the scuba equipment was at the house, and so he had to get back wow. to our house to get all of his equipment. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so so the, the wife was in on it too, Jessica. So Jessica had touched base with Bethany and got her and all the kids out of the house. So I was able to go down there with with Troy and we were able to get all my equipment and pull it up and get everything, making sure everything was up and running again. Um, and then actually at one point, Bethany actually came over to um, Troy and Jessica's house. Um, and I was hiding outside. While you were there. Wow. Yeah, in the car. I, I don't know why you were in the car. He was in the car like in there. They were in a, a apartment, um, kind of some condo areas. And so he was in the parking lot, and apparently I walked right by, and he was like hiding down in this car. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, so there, there yeah, was a couple of close calls, um, but yeah. So basically, I was able to get all the equipment, had everything set up, and then, um, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Um, there's a, there's a tiny little, I guess you could say, little island. Just you can kind of see it in the background. Yeah, um, in the video, that's where I should have started. <laughs> a lot closer. It was a lot closer than uh, there's a little spit that was probably about a half a mile away. Oh, okay. I thought so you were gonna say it was a lot there. closer than Afghanistan. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Look, we all know that's where you started. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so I had got everything out and ready on that little spit out there, and then when I I had saw them arrive with uh, just keep an eye on them with some binoculars and text messaging back and forth with Troy. Um, I jumped in the water and started the half mile swim. And that was, that was a long swim. That is. <laughs> wow. Wow, <laughs> man. And so it was just slow and steady. It gave Bethany and the kids plenty of time to get relaxed and, and chilling in the water. What, what yeah. was that? What was the depth out of curiosity on that swim? Um, Hello? We probably got down only to like 20, 30 okay. feet. Okay. Uh, at the deepest part. But the timing was awesome. Though. Yeah. Was like whoever say. was recording this got the message from like every kid, the Bethany, everyone, like the whole family, and right at the end. Well, you had to like surface and wave at the guy or something like, and then go right back under, right, or something like that. I think he saw me pop up a couple times just okay. to kind of help get my vector in and knew where I was kind of aiming at. Okay. Um, but uh, but it was kind of funny because there I think in the video you'll see there's a number of other people out there with their cameras out in the water. <laughs> and they all had excuses. They like one friend. She was like, "Oh, I just got this new camera. I'm excited. I need to try it out today." Right. And, like everybody that? had an excuse to have it out there, so I didn't think anything about it. Sure. <laughs> exactly. Everyone but you was filming. So, so then, when you first saw him. I know I've been surprised before, so I, you know I'm not going to answer for you. But what 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 was it like? You turn around, you see him in scuba gear. What the immediate first three seconds of your brain was saying? What? It well, at first I thought it was someone else. Um, uh -huh. We knew that someone who had gotten there before us um, from a group of friends. We knew someone was out there um, snorkeling. And so when when someone popped up. With a mask on, my first thought was, "Oh, it's this other guy we know." Yeah. And then the second he took his his the um, goggles, yeah, the goggles off, um, it it was really surreal. Uh, I hadn't seen him in person for almost nine months. Wow. And it was out of context. <laughs> you know, I I just really wasn't expecting it, and I thought I still had two weeks. Like I had an appointment to get my nails done and my hair done, and like. I was gonna clean out his closet that I've been using for storage, all that. Yeah. Um, so it was it was just a very very surreal. Um, it didn't make sense. <laughs> like like when yes. you wake up, you, when you're woken up from and you're kind of in a deep sleep and everything's just like wait that's not that's not making sense. This isn't reality. Exactly. <laughs> yes, that makes a lot. That's how I felt. It's funny. I don't even add any words exactly the way I felt on some surprises. It's, it's almost a state of confusion at the beginning. Uh, like what? This doesn't make sense. Like it's not what's going on. I know what you're saying. That's awesome. Were you were you then 
together from that point forward or were you redeployed and had to leave again? I don't know what the time frame is after that. Right. So he deployed one more time. It actually wasn't even very long after that. It was about six months later I went back over um, for another stint. It was shorter left at that time, just three months. Um, but since then, he's been in different positions that don't deploy as much. Nice. So, <laughs> so you got six months together after that reunion like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And awesome. I remember there was like, let me... God, let me try to remember this question. There was something that you said. I really like before he was came up. There was something you That's missed. Not... No, but I, I would like to play the video again. I really miss your. I don't remember. No, I don't. I just... Oh, it's probably our friend was like, you know, what message you say? I was like, hi, I love you. It's like that's <laughs> it. I was like, uh, I miss your body. <laughs> yes, that that was wow. great. That was. Gr I'm just saying. That's no, he... great. That's a beautiful. I can imagine dinner was and you know was an amazing that's not, evening. That's all. Uh, what a what a reunion. This is, that's awesome. And you sometimes don't even realize, like just having him hold me in his arms, like that night when we were just getting ready to go to bed, and he was just holding me. Nice. It's one of those. I didn't even realize how much I needed it and how yeah. much I missed it until you're back in that. Because then you're like, wow, that I I really needed that. And I didn't even realize how much I needed it. That's awesome. That is awesome. That's really awesome. And you know, like you said, it is it is tough for young couples with children and you're raising families. I think everybody out there should understand just the devotion that our our military members have to give. It's not just what they're doing over there, but man, you're the separation is gotta be tough. And you're describing just how much you needed that when you get it back. So you know, it's a lot to give to your country. It really is more than just the actual absolutely being overseas and doing your duties there. It's you're giving up a whole life. So Hiram, so after after you deploy that next time, then you got moved into you're now in Warner Robins, right? Right here in Georgia. I am now. Yeah. After after Okinawa, we had um, went and served a stint over in Germany, uh, and I had a position there where I was actually. Um, overseeing all the medical trans transfers and transports out of country in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, and making sure that those were all done appropriately. So I still was had my, I guess you could say, my hands in the cookie jar over there, but more from a distance and just making sure everything was done safely. Um, and then went and got some more training, and now we're at Warner Robins, um, serving at, at the base down here in Georgia. And when you awesome. serve at the base, so I, I see you're in a, a home, I guess. Is that on the base or is this just your own home outside the base? Yeah, it's it's outside the base. We're about, it's about a five minute drive. It's not too far away. Nice. Do you get to die if ever? Because it doesn't seem like Wonder Robins is anywhere close, any place. Germany, where you can yeah, <laughs> Germany didn't question. have too many opportunities or we're at Utah doing some school and now here. So unfortunately. Yeah, since Okinawa. Uh, we haven't had, haven't had much of a chance. Mm -hmm. You, but well, you both, had, you both dive, by the way. Yeah, Bethany, did you dive? You dive. Yes. Okay. Well, um, we gotta, we gotta take him diving. Oh yeah, guys, man, mm -hmm. South Florida drift diving is amazing. Or oh, wow. anyway, yeah. Well, not yeah, cave diving. Uh, no, no. But yeah, we actually got our training in Florida. Um, when he, we were at Eglin Air Force Base um, on the Panhandle, and that's where we actually got certified. <laughs> um, are you career military or is this going to be going on for the next 20 years or? Yes. Yeah, so, so I've been in now for about 14 years. So there you go. It would take six, 10 more probably, uh, depending on, you know, different factors. <coughs> but. Yeah. But, but that'll give you, you know, a, a nice, uh, retirement. And then most of the retired guys end up doing something else. Do you have anything in mind? Well, um, I, I am a physician in the military, so I have a oh. couple different board certifications. So I'll probably just transition over to like a hospital practice or a private practice, or we'll see what's out there. Yeah, awesome. yeah, we know a couple very well that went through that same path. You know, we talk about Doug Ebersol a lot. I think. Yeah. Do you? Um, what is your specialty? So I do occupational medicine and family medicine and aerospace medicine. Wow. So. Very cool. That's awesome. I guess you're uh, reading a lot of data on the effects of 
long-term oh, no. space travel? Was it like oh, that kind God. of stuff? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not associated with space force so much. Zero. Okay. That. Well, it always comes down to aliens with Woody. Um, well, I wasn't going to go aliens, but he's probably <laughs> they. You know, he's uh, he's privy to data that he's not going to talk about. That he's not. <laughs> I mean, there I know I data. wouldn't. I, you can't talk about it, but just look at him. Oh look at God. his face right now. Like, he, I know what you know, and he knows uh, what I already know, right. and that's all good. This is going. I'm just this saying is, it's it, when you talk to guys like this. This is all over. For certain is, information. No. All right. So, well, That's thank cool. you guys so much uh, for jumping in with us. Um, you know, we, again, we're very, very uh, honored that yes. you chose to uh, come on board and talk to us about this. I was mainly interested about the logistics. Like, how long was this guy down there for waiting? <laughs> because I have kids, too. We have three kids. And every time I go to the beach, it seems like from the time I park until we're actually in the water, it's at least 17 hours. Like, we're... <laughs> you know, we're Right. The, almost the sun is almost gone yeah. by the time. So I'm like, how long was he in there waiting to pop up? That yeah, was awesome. And the fact that you timed it exactly to when Bethany was done, like giving her words, was amazing. Was I'm great. like, how how was this possible? So um, yeah, we love having you guys. Thank you so much. We gotta we gotta make something happen. We gotta yeah. we gotta make a dive happen. And uh, hire I have. Um, I guess at this point it's a prototype. I don't know if they're available yet for sale, but I want to give it to you. I, I am a brand ambassador with Orca Torch, and they gave me their prototype dive beacon. So I want to send it to you so you can have it. And uh, next time you go diving, you'll have a brand new dive beacon. It's called the SDO3, and it's uh, pretty cool. So um, <laughs> I'll get your address and stuff. I'll send it to you. And um, thank you guys so much for being here. Woody, I don't know if you have any other questions. I Anything just else? wish I could hug you both right now. Like, yeah. wow, it is awesome. <laughs> Amazing. And you brought a lot of happiness to a lot of people with that video. So thanks for that. Absolutely. And hopefully we'll die with you sometime. Absolutely. And um, just like just like you guys, we love obviously featuring uh, other very inspiring people. Like when we talked to Joe Turi in Tampa, yes. U.S. Navy diver. He uh, wore one of those one atmosphere suits and dove down to 2,300 feet. Or 2,700. And you know, you remember what he, when I asked him about what he saw down there, well, he just said, I, let's not get into that, but firm or deny all but that people, stuff. But people can watch the video right here on the yeah, screen. So thank you so much, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you, guys. See you guys.